Hi guys, I'm Sienna. I'm Steph. And welcome to Jack Rinder Plays. Today we're taking some time out to introduce a very special guest who's appeared on TV, radio, and stages all across the country. Is it Ariana Grande? I don't think so. But our guest here has some amazing stories about overcoming adversity and he's here to share them with us today. Please welcome Seamus Evans. Seamus, it's so nice for you to come out today and talk with us. You have been going to schools, spreading your awareness around Tourette, so tell us what you do. So I'm an ambassador for Tourette Syndrome Association Australia, and I go into schools and organisations, and I give my talk on turning a flaw into a superpower through acceptance, passion and determination, and I share my challenge and my journey of overcoming the challenges associated with Tourette Syndrome in order to work on TV. Oh, welcome to Totally Wild, where you never know what's going to happen. What's very impressive is you guys have been on the music rain for like 20 years. <laughs> now, here on the toaster, we love giving nicknames. We were thinking for you, maybe KJ. Are you cool with that? KJ is good. It's a little predictable. I'm really curious about how you got into the industry and what kind of challenges you had to overcome to um, get into the presenting. Getting into any form of media is really difficult. It's so hard, it's a really difficult industry to get into. And I, I failed high school, so I didn't have a degree, no journalism degree or anything to get into it. I was really lucky enough to get an audition for my first TV job. But my big struggles was when I had Tourette's. They were so visible ticks, so many visible ticks. And the boss was like, hey, well, you've, got, you've got Tourette's. So I had to really learn how to redirect my tics and manipulate them to be like disguised into my body language so when I'm in an interview situation like this I can kind of redirect them so people watching at home they can't tell. It was a really hard journey and some of the things, one of the examples I like to give every tick I did I would do slightly different so if I did 200 ticks every day over three months I've done like 18,000 ticks and over that three month period, I've changed that tick like 18,000 times. So can you tell us a little bit more about what actually is Tourette's? Yeah, Tourette's is a neurological condition made up of both motor and vocal tics, and you've got to have both motor and vocal tics to be classified as Tourette's. One in 100 kids have Tourette's, and one in 200 adults have Tourette's. So the best way to explain a tick, mine, these are some of those ticks, and the best way to explain what a tick is is like having an itch on your arm and it's like subconsciously you'll just scratch your arm without even thinking. I was training for a marathon in Cairns and I'd go running, right? And what happens when you run and your shirt rubs against your nipples, it gives you a nipple rash. And so I'd be running and constantly itching. I thought that's annoying. So I'd start running without my shirt on, but that became a tick. So I'd be running down the street in public, <laughs> squeezing my nipples. Everyone's like, what is that guy doing? Your talk is about turning a flaw into a superpower. How do you turn Tourette's into a superpower? That's a good question and to be honest, it was such an insecurity for me for so many years. But through my journey of self-acceptance, discovering a passion and becoming determined to achieve my ultimate goal of being a breakfast radio host and having a television career, through that journey, I had to really subconsciously and I really had to come to terms with who I was as a person and accept myself for my flaws and strengths, whatever that was. And I learned that your flaws and strengths are determined by you. So you still have this. For example, I had Tourette's, but it was up to me to put it either in a flaw or a strength category. And it took so many years to learn how to accept who I was as a person with what a lot of people could consider a flaw, how I had to accept it, embrace it, and really lean into my personality. And through that, I lost the embarrassment and I lost the insecurities and I really found a confidence in myself to be an advocate for Tourette's and so when people asked me questions I wouldn't come up with lies and make up jokes to, to deflect it. Instead, I, it gave me a sense of pride and it gave me an ownership and I was able to just confidently and excitedly explain what Tourette's is all about. But it wasn't an overnight thing, it took a very long time for me to consciously change the way I viewed me and my condition and learnt that it's not having Tourette's determining who I am as a person, it's just me who has Tourette's. The first thing I had to do was accept it, was self-acceptance. I had to accept the fact that I was different. 
I had to stop ignoring that I had Tourette's and I had to accept the fact that I had them. And then every day by the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep, I would work on myself and I would think, okay, how am I feeling? Am I, am I anxious? Am I tired? Am I angry? Am I frustrated? Am I happy? Am I excited? Am I nervous? How do I feel? Because the way you feel triggers a lot of your Tourette's rather than the actual ticks themselves. What encourages them is the way you feel and when you see people with Tourette's, when you talk about it, when you talk about your own ticks, that's when your ticks come out. Every day is a different day with Tourette's and some days my ticks are really, really bad and some days they're not. What I have found is it's my mood that triggers the Tourette's rather than the actual tick. So for example, if I'm anxious, if I'm nervous, if I'm stressed, I'll tick a lot more throughout the day. But if I kind of monitor how I'm feeling, then my ticks would subside a little bit. And sometimes ticks come and go. So like one day I'll wake up and I'll be like, wait, that's a new tick. I haven't had that one before. And then that'll be there for like a couple of months and then it goes away. And sometimes like this tick here, I've had that since I was young. Like that's one of the, the OGs, the original gangster ticks that I've had like forever. And sometimes it goes away and sometimes it comes back. For example, six months ago, I got this one. And all of a sudden I just turned into like a human lawnmower walking down the street wearing a mask. And everyone's like, oh, this is gonna mow my Lord Jim's mowing over here. He's cutting grass. <laughs> you mentioned there was a really hard time in your life when you were dealing with Tourette's. Um, what kind of external supports did you have that like helped, uh, if you had any? I, I actually didn't. I only had my mum and my dad. And yeah, growing up with Tourette's is really difficult. There is no cure. And you're like a sitting duck when you constantly tick like this. Everyone's looking at you and you're, you're a real sitting duck for people to make comments. And I did hate it for a very long time and I hated myself for it and I was so frustrated with it. And I remember when I was young, I was about eight years old and I used to have tick fits. <clears throat> Horrible grunting and I would get so frustrated I would punch myself in the face and I, I just hated, I hated having Tourette's. But my mum and my dad were very lovely with me and, and they gave me a lot of love and support and I had to learn how to manage them because when you have Tourette's, it's all about your individual relationship with Tourette's. No one else, it's yours. And so you can control how you manipulate your tics and you can control your relationship. And I had to learn that myself and, 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 and it, was, it was a difficult time, but you know, we were all faced with difficult times and that was mine. It would have been really hard, yeah. Seamus, I have a question. Is there external support for people who have Tourette's these days? Absolutely. Uh, Tourette Syndrome Association Australia. I'm the ambassador for Tourette Syndrome Association Australia and they are incredible. I went to, a, I was lucky enough to go to one of their camps recently where the whole family gets together and it's, it's so cool because they just say, everybody, let your ticks out. And so you've got like 60 kids all have Tourette's and everybody's ticking, like eating dinner there. It was the most exciting thing I've ever seen. And it's such a great community for them to come together and say, hey, it's okay, we have Tourette's, it's all right, let's experience it together. And it was a really loving community. So Tourette's Syndrome Association Australia are brilliant with kids with Tourette's. Oh, that's great. How do you go in the dating world? Do you tell your dates that you have Tourette's? When I, when I was first dating, when I was 18 and meeting girls, I, I would tell them, I'd say, by the way, I just want to let you know I have Tourette's. Almost like a disclaimer to let them know what they were getting into. Um, but now I find, um, I don't really tell many people, a lot of people when they ask me, when they notice if I'm ticking a fair bit, they'll say, why do you keep doing that? But over the years of my acceptance journey, I am not embarrassed in the slightest. And in fact, I'm more open and more willing to have that conversation. And I have found, being so confident in myself, uh, the people that I've dated have actually liked it and they thought it added to my character. I mean, if they didn't like it, I wouldn't know because they never called me back. So all those people that never messaged me back, oh, I'd have no idea what happened to them. <laughs> and finally, what kind of advice do you have for people that might not have Tourette's but are just going through a hard time in their life? I think everybody faces hard times in their lives. Everybody goes through different things and everybody's faced with adversity. It's up to you to determine if that adversity is gonna be a flaw or a strength, and it's your own journey. And there's no denying it, life can be hard. That journey is a real struggle. But the way I did it, through acceptance, passion, and determination, by not stopping, keep going every single day, every single step. How do you climb a mountain? One step at a time. So if you just keep on going, eventually, you can pave your own journey and you can get to the end. So during that 13 year journey, 
of acceptance, passion and determination. That thing, Tourette's that I had, that I hated, that I carried around like an elephant on my back and I was ignoring, wasn't something that affected me anymore, it was just something I managed. But now, I can stand in front of you as an ambassador for Tourette's Syndrome Association Australia and I go around to schools and organisations and I give this talk to show that I've turned a flaw into a superpower through acceptance, passion and determination. Because now, I don't hate Tourette's. I hated it because it made me different. But now I love it because it makes me different. And I've changed the way I've viewed it and I've been able to use it to be the best version of myself. Thank you for coming to Jacaranda Place and sharing your stories and experience. No worries, thank you guys so much for having me. You guys were awesome, I absolutely loved it. I love Jacaranda Place, thank you so much. All right, we'll catch you later.